Hey guys, today we are going to talk about a few strange cards that have been going up in price and are quite valuable. First, we will start off with a Homelands card with Minotaurs. This is kind of very good if you, if you believe that there will be more Minotaurs in the future. Now the Minotaurs have to be bigger and they have to be better than what they are today, but assuming that magic continues, we will see more Minotaurs. Now what I like about it is you compare it to Quicksilver Amulet, I believe. It costs 4 and then 4 to send a creature out and play in Elvis Piper, which costs 4 and then a green to tap it. It's also a 1-1, one, one, so it's quite easy to hit Elvis Piper. And then you compare it to Belb's Portal from Nemesis, which costs 5 and then free to activate it, but you had to call a creature type. It could be any creature type. This costs 1. And you can play on Curve. So you can play this 1. I don't know what you would play turn 2, maybe a Minotaur of some type. And then drop your big fatty. So it's always going to be good. Game day promos. Now, game day promos, there have been lots and lots of game day promos. Uh, game day promos being something that's given out to everybody. You don't have to be a top eight competitor. You don't have to win game day to win the mat. Everyone gets one of these. Now, vampires are hot. And this particular vampire, Callista Highborn, is a $30 foil. Again, if you can go back in time, and you could trade for these like they were peanuts. So most game day foils, like the giant whale that we have, the Colossus whale, I mean, that's just how it is. The only game day promo I remember thinking, hmm, this card might be valuable, is the Restoration Angel one. But when this one came out, I didn't expect it to be val valuable. Vampires was not the tribal deck it is today where you have obviously Commander 2017 being most recent, but you have multiple sets like Innistrad and Return to Innistrad, Eldric Moon, Shadows over Innistrad. Next, uh, Angel. So this Angel has been reprinted. It still ha held a $20 foil price. Again, it's another game day promo. Actually, I take it back. Callister is a top eight promo. This is not a game day release promo, so you do have to finish in the top eight. So it's not like Colossal Whale, which is a release promo. So my mistake, I just realized, hmm, I don't remember seeing main copies of this, but Callista Highborn, yeah, there was lots of copies of her in trade binders everywhere. So this angel is pretty good. Foil angels in full art have always kept their price very well. I believe it's also a top eight promo, uh, and the next few are top eight promos. So you have to go to game day, you have to finish in top eight. Typically in the game days I go to, there's only eight people, and the store owner is kind of a deuce bag, and they make us like do sealed so they can sell more product. It's not, it's very strange. If you live in Houston, you probably know what store I'm talking about. It used to be two stores, and then I think one of them went out of business, or they combined, I guess is how they phrase it. They combined. And the customer service was always very bad, and they always were like out to make as much money as possible. And they would never give us the correct promos. They would always give us the uh, least valuable promos. I remember that very clearly. But anyway, these this is Black Sun the Zenith is a seventeen dollar card, almost twenty dollars, and it is also a top eight game day, game day promo. Wow, I don't remember Callista Highborn being a top eight promo, huh? Obviously, it is because it's the foil full art rare. But for some reason, I think there were so many copies of it. I don't know if game day promos were more common back in the day. Maybe perhaps there was multiple game days from each store. Uh, actually, it's probably where I lived. I lived in uh, Richmond, Virginia, or Williamsburg, Virginia. And we went to Richmond, and the store owner in Richmond, it was like in the trendy part of town. I forget what the game was. Uh, I bought my commander deck from there, and it was damaged, and they gave it to me at a very good discount. And they were very, they were very friendly, and they always... I'm, I'm sure this is what happened. People... 
some stores give out all the game day promos and they don't care. They're going to give it out to everybody. They're going to give out for new players. They're going to randomize it. Even if it's a very small community, everyone gets more of it. And we were a small community. But then I moved to Houston, and then the people did not give out the promos. They made it so that you had to do seal. They made it so that you had to at least get eight people with your friends. And even if they had 16 promos, they would only give you one. Back in Richmond, they would give, if you had four people, and they had 16 promos, they'd give, give everyone a playset. And that's how I was. I think that's why Callista Highborn... Um, I just saw so many copies. It was in everyone's trade binder for a long time. Now, this is a good one. Staff of Domination. I've always liked it. It has an infinite combo with, uh, what is it, Priest of Titania and four other elves. You go infinite with it. Uh, this is the Buy a Box promo. Birds of Paradise, the Buy a Box promo. So it's called Media Promo. It is beautiful. To my knowledge, it's the only Birds of Paradise with this artwork on it. I know the Ravnica one has been reprinted. And that one was very good looking too. And obviously you have the classic Birds of Paradise, which is an alpha, beta, unlimited, revised, fifth edition, etc. This, oh, and you have the seventh edition Birds of, uh, Birds of Paradise, which is a different artwork. This is gorgeous. Like if you're lucky enough to have one of these, I just don't see anyone trading them. Like there's some cards that I look at and I would never put in my trade binder. I do own this card. And I will say that as something as useful as Birds of Paradise, you will have utility for it. You can have a single copy of it and then put in your ED8 stack. And it's fantastic. It is a, um, it's a classic. I don't know how else to say it, but I don't, I don't, I would not imagine people who have this card would be that willing to trade it to people, other people, uh, given what it is in terms of how it looks. Now, Parallel Lives, I have an interesting story about this. This was a $1 card, as you can see from the graph. This, I could have gone very deep into, but I chose not to. So it was Parallel Lives or Falia. Falia has done maybe better, but the Falia price point of entry was $2. Parallel Lives was a dollar at the same time. And I should have, I knew Parallel Lives was going to go up in price because I looked at it and I said, hmm, there's this other card called Doubling Season and Parallel Lives is not as good as Doubling Season, but Doubling Season at the time before the reprint was $40 and still like $40. Um, but I may, I concluded that I would rather have the Princess, right, over this one. But there's some things that are so obvious um, there's a card in Amaket, which is pretty obvious. It will fall after rotation because all the majority of cards will fall after rotation. Even the ones that you don't think that should go down, they will go down because many people only play standard. So you have an increase in supply. Uh, and the people are selling those cards to stores and stores are buying them and they're trying to resell them. And then they're like, all right, I bought this card for a dollar. I think it's really worth five dollars, but I need a cash flow. So I'll sell it to you for four dollars. And then the four dollars becomes three dollars if they have too many of them because too many of their standard players. It depends on your locals. Uh, my locals, which is no longer allowed to hold tournaments because they didn't do a good job, which I'll explain later. It was mostly standard players. So whenever you wanted Hunt Masters or Filiars or Discard, you could feast on them. I think I have an old video where I showed you like $800 of just cards from this uh, block, Innistrad block. And they were all very good cards. And uh, I don't know. People, people play standard and that's what they like. Anyway, bye guys.